This is Octavian from Infinite Games, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you what the cast note is in Unreal Engine 5, what its purpose is, and why you shouldn't use it. Let's jump right into it. So what is this thing? Let me explain. The basic idea with the cast note, and in this case with the cast to rec light note, is that it allows you to convert an object reference, which you plug into object, into a, another type. So for example, I could plug an actor into here, and if that actor is a subclass of red light, which in this case would mean that you've created a blueprint, like so. So like I was saying, you created a blueprint, and you set here where it says pick parent class, you set it to rec light. I'm using rec light just because it was the first thing that popped up when I searched for cast, so we'll go with it. So if I select rec light here, I'm going to call this rec light subclass. This is a child blueprint of the rect light. And so now, if we had a reference to this blueprint in a generic type, we could cast it to this specific blueprint so we could access its properties. Let me explain that a little bit easier. For example, in this project, we have a character class, which is the base character. It contains all the functionality that I wanted to put inside of the character. If I open it, in fact, you can see there's a ton of specific functionality inside it. And this blueprint is parented to the character class, which is a more generic type in Unreal Engine that is actually built into the engine. Thing is, in Unreal and in a lot of programming languages, we have this concept of inheritance, which I actually, I think I partly talked about in a previous video. But in this case, the idea of inheritance is simply the fact that you make one class or one blueprint and you can parent or create subclasses which contain all the functionality of that parent. So for example, for this character, if I right click and create child blueprint class, this will give us a child class. And the cool thing about a child class is that in its event graph, for instance, you don't have all the functionality that you had in the character, but it's actually built into it, even if it doesn't look like it. You also have all the properties that you had in the character, so you can modify them here for specifically if you wanted to make different variants of that. However, here's where the cast node becomes useful. Let's say that this character, I wanted to have specific functionality for it, right? So for instance, let's call this like character, you know, uh, fighter. I'm just making this up. For character fighter, we're going to say that it has an event and that event is going to be something like fight. I'm just making it up. But again, if we wanted to call fight here from another blueprint, we would have to figure out how to get our character and then how to access this specific fight method. Here's one simple example of that. Let's say from the weapon, for whatever reason, I wanted to access this character reference. In Unreal, you have a thing called get player character. This is just a function that Unreal has. And get player character, like it says here, returns the pawn for the player controller. The pawn. If you hover here, it's going to say character object reference. So this is a character. However, if we drag from here and type fight, you're going to see that there's absolutely no fight event, right? So if I wanted to call that fight event, just like it says here, I would first have to cast to character fighter, which is this right here. And then from character fighter, I would then be able to call fight. That's the core idea of cast. Again, quick recap. If you have a child class in this guy, in this case, for example, from the character, which has specific functionality, in our case, the fight event, one way to access it would be to get a reference to that character and then cast that reference to whatever subclass or child class we want to call the functionality on. However, it's not all beautiful with casting. In fact, most of the things about casting aren't really all that great, and it's not very good practice most of the time. Let me explain why. First of all, if you're a beginner, you might not really understand this very well, but I'm going to try to explain the concept as easily and as simply as I can. The thing with casting is that every time you call a cast inside of a blueprint, one thing that happens in Unreal is that Unreal has to load that entire other blueprint type inside of memory, which means you're cluttering the RAM, basically. One way to see this would be, in this case, since we're in the assault rifle, I can right click and then go to size map. As you can see, inside of the weapon size map, there is a very gigantic part which is covered by character fighter. And this is taking 73 megabytes of memory. This means that every time you load a assault rifle inside of the game, or well, the first time you load an assault rifle inside of the game, it's gonna automatically load this other blueprint, which is character fighter. Now, that's not really great. Why would we wanna load character fighter every time we spawn an assault rifle. That doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? And this would happen with any cast that you do. And so the more casts that you do, 
the more things you're loading alongside that blueprint. Another downside of casting is that it's actually quite expensive performance-wise. We don't even need to speak about memory size, because if you were to call a cast inside of Tick, this right here is a really easy way to lower your game's performance. This cast operation is super expensive, so if you are to use it, don't use it in Tick. That's one super important thing that you should keep in mind when casting. So instead of doing this, for example, in this case, what you could do is right-click, mode to variable, uh, character, fighter. And so you could store this reference, for example, in begin play. This is, this is something we call caching. It's just a matter of storing a reference inside of a variable. All I did is save it inside of this. And so if I save it as begin play, and then, and then in tick I call fight, this will be totally fine. A few more interesting things. The cast node doesn't automatically check if your object is valid. So this is something that you should check. In this case, for example, since we're getting player character, I believe the player character is basically always valid for the most part in Unreal Engine, unless you destroy it. But if you don't really have any character, there's not a lot of instances where you don't have any character. And so this is usually valid. Regardless though, a really good thing to do here would be to, before that, add an is valid check right here and check that that get player character reference is valid be before before we cast it. This will ensure that you don't get any null reference errors. To put it even easier, this just makes sure that the thing isn't empty. So this is a check, basically, does it exist? And then if it does exist, then we can cast it to that character fight. Also, same thing here, naturally. I would probably have a is valid check right here too, just to ensure that this reference is valid. So with that, this would allow us to access any functionality inside a character fighter. That's kind of how the whole thing works. But I've already talked about the downsides of casting, but I haven't really told you what you can do instead of casting. I'm only going to mention them because this video isn't really supposed to be about them, but there's a thing called interfaces in most programming languages and certainly in Unreal Engine. And the idea with interfaces is they're basically a contract that you make with an object which says, hey, you're going to have these functions. You need to have these functions implemented. And when we do that, what we can do is we can actually call those functions on whatever object we have without having to cast it. And if that object has those functions implemented, we will run that functionality automatically. And if it doesn't, then it just won't do anything. But with that, you would basically save all this trouble of having to cast the thing. And you could just use get player character. But I'll talk about interfaces in a different video. This one really isn't about. So when should you cast? That's the last thing that I'm going to talk about. When should you cast? Well, there's actually cases where you should cast. For example, there are objects that always load other objects. And so in those cases, you can totally cast to them. You're not hurting the performance if you do it once, and you're also not loading anything that wasn't already going to be loaded. So one example of this, and this is, and this is something that even Epic Games does in their own samples, inside of animation blueprints, usually you would cast to whatever character type you have, because you're going to be getting very specific values from that character. And so if you have to call a bunch of interface functions, that is actually pretty expensive too. It's actually in this case, performance wise, it's better to cast and just store the reference like I'm doing here. This is actually a really bad setup. Don't do this. I left this here and it's kind of funny. I left this here unintentionally, but for this, you would do exactly what I was telling you about before. So instead of running this right here, That was one mistake of mine. But yeah, see, in that case, for example, I was running a cast in a sort of take event, which isn't great. Um, however, in any case, my point here was that right here, I am casting to that specific character because as you can see here, there are very many references that I'm getting from the character. So, so aiming is a very specific value that our BP character has. It's not on the base character. So if I tried to use this, which is a function that animation blueprints expose to get that aiming value, not going to work. So even if I type aiming, nothing's going to show up. And yeah, that's kind of about it. Hopefully that was a good explanation. It might not have been. I'm doing my best here to try to explain things a little bit better. So bear with me here. These videos will get better. But in any case, I hope that was useful. And if it was, just leave a comment. I'm also going to leave in the description a link for you to download this specific template right here, which contains a bunch of little nuggets of wisdom. And, and that fix that I just made is going to also be in the version that you're going to be able to download. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video.